but soft, what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Ah, the beauty of Shakespeare, the danger of foolish pride and family feuds, the tragedy of two star-crossed lovers. If you like romance, secrets, lies, conflict, and, well, drama, then you are going to love William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. A drama, like a play that's written for the stage or a screenplay that's written for a TV show or a movie, is its own form of literature. Like a novel or a short story, a drama is a narrative. It has characters, settings, and a plot. It provides exposition, an inciting incident, rising action, a climax. It, you guys all know the drill by this point. But what makes a drama different is that it's divided into acts and scenes instead of chapters. And it's told mostly through dialogue. That dialogue is written as lines for characters to say. And it's written not necessarily to be read, but to be performed. You don't get description and explanation. You just get to sit back and watch the action unfold. Like this back and forth about biting your thumb right here. This, this is actually straight out of Romeo and Juliet. This play gets pretty crazy. William Shakespeare is probably the most famous playwright or creator of dramas to ever live. He was born in a place called Stratford-upon-Avon in the English countryside in 1564. Queen Elizabeth I was the monarch of the time period, ruling over England and Scotland from 1558 to 1603 during the latter part of the Renaissance. This particular period of British history is known as the Elizabethan era. It was a time when new ideas and discoveries were popping up everywhere, when art and literature thrived, and when people flocked to theaters to see the works of people like, well, William Shakespeare. Throughout his lifetime, Shakespeare produced nearly 40 plays and over 150 poems. His work has remained popular, his plays continue to be produced, and scholars still study the genius of his craft. And perhaps the most famous of all of his plays is the romantic tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. Yes, it's a romance, but it's also a tragedy. You will learn that right up front. The, the play opens up with a sonnet that basically outlines the entire plot. A chorus comes out and tells you that in the far off city of Verona, Italy, two families still carry out an ancient feud. Two young people fall in love, but because they're on opposite sides of this conflict, well, it doesn't really end well for them, and they both die. I'm, I'm not giving you any spoilers or anything. They literally tell everyone that right at the start of the play, in the prologue. So. The two young lovers are referred to as star-crossed lovers, meaning they were doomed to fail because it was written in the stars that they would. There was a pervasive belief in astrology during the Elizabethan era, and the role of fate, or destiny, creates a main theme of this drama. Along with love, hate, revenge, honesty, there are a lot of themes you can extract from this play. Ah, <sighs> the theater. Before you get started, there's a few tips that I'd like to offer you. A lot of people can feel intimidated by Shakespeare, and I don't want you to feel like that. So let's go over a few basics. First things first, yes, this play was written over 400 years ago, and the English language has changed a little bit since the Elizabethan era. Here's a few basic pointers for you to remember. First, the words the 
thou and ye all mean you, and thine and thy mean your. Art means are, and was means were. And if you see anon, that just means soon. Another thing to know is that Shakespeare wrote his dialogue mostly in iambic pentameter. Remember that from our poetry unit? It's that rhythm that goes da 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 da. Like when Lady Capulet says, Enough of this, I pray thee hold thy peace. Yeah, you're probably wanting to say the same thing to me right now, but hang on, I'm almost finished. There's just one more curious detail about the way these lines are phrased. Shakespeare often used inverted syntax, meaning he mixes up the order in which words appear in a sentence. For example, I could tell you that I read a book. The subject is I, the verb is read, the object, a book. That feels normal. But what if I said, a book I read? Well, that feels odd, right? Because now it goes object, subject, verb. You'll find some of this inverted syntax in Romeo and Juliet, like in Act 1, when Romeo's mom is looking for him, and instead of asking, have you seen Romeo today? She says, oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Saw you him? Who says that? Well, Lady Montague says that. And when you notice that inverted order, don't sweat it. Just mentally rearrange the sentence so you understand its meaning. People may have been a little looser with their syntax in Elizabethan era England, but it probably had a little more to do with the fact that Shakespeare was writing in iambic pentameter, and he had to rearrange the words sometimes to make sure that all the syllables and the stresses lined up. However, don't try to read it in that rhythm. Remember, dramas were written to be performed. This is dialogue. Read it expressively. Or at the very least, you should try reading it out loud. Or better yet, if you can, get a group together to do it. And don't rush it. You might find that it takes a few readings of a scene before you truly understand it. You'll probably also encounter some challenging vocabulary, so don't be afraid to look words up. That's how we learn. Okay, one final thing, really. We are going to be front-loading with a tool called Set the Scene. You are going to be reading a little blurb that basically gives the main idea of a scene before you read it. This is just a little extra support to help you make the most of your reading. All right, now I think we're finally ready. Take your time, enjoy the drama, and be sure to keep some tissues nearby. In the words of Shakespeare, for never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo.